Good morning, everyone. Will those who are able please stand? Thank you so much. I will be reading 2 Corinthians 4, 8, 9, and 15. The word of God says, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairingly, prosecuted, but not struck down, but <clears throat> forsaken, but not destroyed. And then uh, verse 15 says, For all these things are for your sakes, that the grace which is spread to more and more people may cause the giving of things to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For more maturity, light of fiction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison where we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal and the word of God is already blessed Father God we just come saying thank you Father we praise you Father for a brand new mercy God we take the opportunity to say thank you, Father. We ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive us for our sins, known and unknown, in deed and in action. And Father, I want to take the time to say we adore you. We love you. We reference you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we openly confess we need you. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you in. Come on in. Reign and rule in these services. Oh, Lord, we praise your holy name. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? It's just you know he's on your side. Come on, saints. Praise him for his mercy. Praise him for his grace. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all your praise. Oh God, the word of God says, we will overcome us by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony. Our testimony should be your light in the darkness, your way maker. Psalms 121 and 5 says that you are a keeper. So God, we thank you for keeping us for protecting us, for your grace, your mercy, not because of saints, but in spite of. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So God, we declare what the word says, by your stripes we are healed. And then it goes on to Jeremiah 30 and 17, it says, we are restored. So God, I thank you. Psalms 127 said he sent his word to heal, to deliver. So whatever you need, the Lord God's got it. He's got everything you need. And then Luke 10 and 19 says, we have been given the power, the authority to execute righteousness over evil. Oh God, we thank you. To bind up the strong man, spoil his goods, leave his house. Helplessly and hopelessly. Come on, saints. If you believe that, you should be praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And his mercy endure forever through all generations. So that includes you and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you the glory, Father. Oh, God, we thank you, God. That you so loved us. That you gave your only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish. And I don't know about you, but I believe. Not only do I believe, I receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the Savior. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. The blood is a keeper. Isaiah 
54 and 17 says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. This is the reward of the saints. I don't know about you, but I'm a saint. And I receive that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, you're shalom. You are our peace. You are our hope. You are our light. You are our joy. You are our peace. And since I bleed that, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh God, I give you glory. Oh God. You are El Shaddai. You are Yeshua. You are a bright and morning star. You are Jehovah Gaborah. You are Jehovah Nisi. Our banner over the enemy. Oh God, we praise you. We thank you for the anointing that destroys the yokes, Father. We give you glory. Oh God, I thank you. And I praise you, God. God, I thank you for our angels, oh God. I call forth our angel along with a legion of angels to get the job done, to minister on our behalf that will give us the victory. Hallelujah. So I praise you in advance, Father, for the victory. Can't nobody do it like God. Because, see, our God, he never fails. And I thank you, Father. Oh, God, we give you glory. We give you honor, God. He's a good God, y'all. Oh, my God. He has done great things. And I thank him for it. He recovered our souls. We are on our way to hell, but God said not so. He sent his only begotten son. And his son gave us life so that we may have life eternally. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. We thank you for your son, God. And God, in this world we are living in, we are praying for the leaders, God, that you expose and dispose of the ones that mean you, you are the people any good, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray for our sons and daughters. You said that you will save them, oh God. You said you will contend with us, contend with that, that contend with us, according to Isaiah 49 and 25. So today we trust you. We put them in your hands. And you, we thank you for saving them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And then another scripture says, Luke 142, the fruit of our belly is blessed. Hallelujah. So we know if you keep them, God, they are kept in safety. So we give them to you, God. For God, I ask you to go into the drug houses, to the highways and the byways, and save them, oh God. Give them a new taste after righteousness. Somebody's mama, somebody's daddy, somebody's child somebody's husband somebody's wife save God save and deliver this day and we thank you father and save them with a testimony father in the name of Jesus so come on church shout hallelujah for restoration in their lives oh God give them a new taste God deliver them from alcohol oh God deliver them from crack cocaine prescription drugs and anything that doesn't give you glory father oh god we thank you and we yet praise you god father god i pray for the forsaken the forgotten about the mentally ill the abused the misused sin a co-labor jesus christ to minister to them salvation and deliverance let them know that god loves them oh hallelujah I praise you for salvation, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for our youth, oh God, that they would do what your word says. Honor thy mother and father so that it may be well with you. 
this is the first commandment with promise. And we need to be teaching it to our kids day and night. So God, I thank you for the parents, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, and the teachers, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you've been good. Through the storm, through the rain, the lightning and the storm, we are still standing. And that's enough to give God praise for. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> so God, I just want to say thank you, God. I just want to say I adore you, God. Anoint the praise team. Anoint your spoken word, Father. In the name of Jesus, we lift up our pastor to you, God. We say make his feet like hinds feet, Father. Anoint him with the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you. Oh, God, I say may the Lord bless us. May the Lord keep us. May the Lord be gracious unto us. May he lift his countenance upon us and give us peace. <clears throat> shalom, shalom. We thank you and we praise you. And God, we are hungry for you. We are thirsty for you, God. So God, we thank you. Our life after hearing the word will be for the better. Come on, church, give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad this morning? Don't fool me now. Are you really glad this morning? Hallelujah. Yes, God. It is such a privilege once again to come before you and do praise and worship. Every time I come into the building, those that are here, they always greet me with a smiling face. So it's always good to, you know, feel welcome when you come into the house of the Lord. So you guys really make me feel welcome when I come. And I really appreciate that. Hallelujah. We're going to do some old, some little old school medley, which I know everybody would know. And they can clap. If you don't know, you're going to at least clap your hands, right? Uh-huh. But we're going to take you to some church. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Like Jesus, ain't nobody do me like the Lord. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, He's my, yeah, He healed my body. Told me to run on, He healed my body. Told me to run on, heal my body. Told me to run on. Run on, heal my body. Told me to run on, heal my body. Told me to run on. He's my friend. Come on, clap your hands. Another one. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Can you help me? There is power, power, wonder.
wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power. Power in the blood. There is power. Wonder working power. Worship him, just love on him. Thank him for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ooh. Lord, we give you the praise. Lord, we worship you. You're worthy of all the praise. And worthy of all the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. Lord, I love you forever. I love you. Oh. 
forever, Lord. Can you help me say I love you? I love you. It's real simple. I love you forever. I love you forever. Can you help me say I love you? I love you forever. I love you. Come on and say, I love you forever. I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. Oh, Forever, forever, Lord. I worship forever. I worship forever. I worship forever, Lord. We'll worship forever. Come on. We'll worship. Lift your hands and say, We'll worship. Worship forever, Lord. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We'll worship forever and ever. We'll worship forever. We'll worship forever, Lord. One more time, we'll worship forever.
say, I love you forever. Come on. I love you.
This past week, I was in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and we took some tours of some temples. And these temples had Buddha statues in them. People were burning. And my heart just broke when I saw all of this. And, and one time, the uh, our tour guide, he's Buddhist also, and he uh, he said, if you want to give some money, it give you good luck. <laughs> it's almost like playing the lottery for your lottery players and your folks that go to the game room. You want to get some good luck. But all my hope, all that I trust in, come from the almighty God. That's who I'm going to trust in. That's who I'm going to put my hope in. Not in Buddha. Not in any of these other gods. But I'm going to put my trust in the one that sent his son to die for your sins and mine. And he got up out of a grave one day. And he still lives today. I feel the presence of the Lord in me. I hope you feel the presence of the Lord in you. But when I think about the goodness of God and how you and I got a free opportunity to worship the true and living God, and sometimes we don't take that opportunity. Because our minds are so many other places until we don't know how to worship God. We, our mind is on our situation and our circumstance. Guess what? Situation and circumstance is going to always be here. So you might as well just get used to it. There's going to always be some bad people around. So you might as well just get used to it. But know you put your trust in the almighty Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He's my Savior. He's my Savior. He's my Savior. Whoa, glory! Lord, you're my, my Savior. Lord, I love you. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. One day we're going to get it. When we come to the house of the Lord, we need to pour out everything we got to worship this almighty God. Some of you sit and don't even know it. And because you worship God, he healed your body. <laughs> hallelujah. Just because you call his name, hallelujah, he healed your body. Some of y'all 
y'all don't even know the job you own is not fit for you and God is getting ready to open up another door for you right now. And just because you praise his name, he's opening up another door just for you. Oh, bless his name. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Hallelujah. Psalm 100. Begin with verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinner, sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Our thought for today is, do not worry, God got this. Do not worry God got this oh blessed be the name of the Lord Psalm 1 yeah Psalm 1 Psalm 1 hallelujah Psalm 1 hallelujah Psalm 1 oh blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Do y'all have that up yet? If not, Brother Jason, can you go back there? Thank you. Hallelujah. Y'all, the Lord is so good to us. He's so, so good. Yet, we worry about the wrong We worry about the wrong stuff, and even when we come into the house of the Lord, sometimes we are not truly focused on the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes not truly focused. Uh, I have a Facebook uh, clip that I posted last night, and I want to I wanna show that real quickly. Can y'all look at that real quick and make sure that it's up there? If it's ready to go, let me know. It talks about the pastor cussed out the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, and I just want to share this with you because even pastors are getting tired of coming to preach every Sunday. And you got most people looking at Facebook and looking at TikTok and, and don't know what the sermon is about. And then they're going to come back and ask God to pray for them next week. Hallelujah. The people of God got to stay focused. They got to be in a place where God can use them. Y'all, I told you that the political climate is going to a whole different level. It's going to a whole different level. Uh, while I was on vacation, uh, President Biden stepped back. I guess he did find out he was too old. And, and Kamala Harris is now the presumptive candidate for the Democratic Party. And uh, I'm not telling you how to vote, but I'm telling you to vote. 
I'm telling you to vote. Hallelujah. President Trump almost got assassinated, which is just horrible. I wouldn't want to see nobody get killed. I didn't want to see my enemy get. I want God to handle them, but a man don't need to handle it. Let God handle it. And that's where we need to be as part of the body of Christ. We need to let God handle stuff, and we get out of the way. The political climate is going to get so rough, it's going to show up on your job. Hallelujah. It's going to show up in your community. It's going to show up at HEB. Somebody's going to be scanning your groceries. They're going to throw your eggs and throw your bread. <laughs> Hallelujah. People are going to get ugly. On the Democrat side and on the Republican side, they're going to get ugly. And some of those people, they come to church. And they worship and they praise God. And I want to know, where is God at? Is God in any of this? When people intentionally try to tear you apart, the Republicans are going to tear apart the Democrats, the Democrats are going to tear apart the Republicans, then we have a divided company. It's just like a divided house. It becomes divided. Our jobs will become divided. Okay, you all ready? Okay, if y'all ready to show it, uh, go ahead and play it. Make sure we got some sound. That's that. Okay, go ahead. Hey, I want you to look me in my eye. I am not pastor in church where the teenagers lay all over each other like a bunch of dogs in heat, talking to each other while I'm trying to preach the word of God in this pulpit. Your kid ain't doing it, and your kid ain't doing it. I have instructed my security staff to pick you up by the seat of the bridges and throw your wicked tail out of here. What kind of girl would let a boy fall all over her in the house of God? If you're that wicked to do that in church, what the same hell are you doing when you're not in church? You're not going to play with your cell phone. You're not going to love the game around. You're not going to talk. Hey, Justice. Hey, Justice. Justice, look up here. Hey, Justice. Hey, Justice. Look up here while I'm preaching, son. Yeah, I'm preaching all that crap back there, and you been blue. You ought to have your eyes on your preacher while the man of God's preaching. You should be falling around. I didn't put up with it now. I don't give a flip whose kids you are. And I'll tell you how you better stop this nonsense. Make your kids shut the view with them, and when they act up, smack the living hell out of them. Get a stop this bunch of nonsense. I'm telling you, I ain't putting up with it. I come here to go to church. I ain't a referee. I ain't fooling around with a bunch of people laughing and giggling. It's so glad they are recording. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> so the pastor gets upset. Prepare a sermon every week. And people playing TikTok on their phones, <laughs> Instagram, shopping on their groceries, getting that HEB list at Walmart this. So when they leave church, they can go by Walmart and pick up the groceries. You know, the devil is a lie. The devil done tricked us so until we think that we really know what's going on. But the devil have tricked the people of God. And because he has tricked the people of God, we just fall for anything. That's why I'm telling the folks that want to be righteous, don't worry. God got this. God got it. I'm not going to put my trust in material things or in man because I know where my hope lies. It lies in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Let's look at today's scripture. It said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. He said, You're blessed if you ain't ungodly. He said, Nor standeth in the way of sinners, hanging out with the sinners, just doing what they do, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. 
So being blessed is like a person that's happy. They got so much joy because he is connected to the almighty God. Yo, there's some things I'm not going to worry about because I got a connection with God. I ain't going to worry about my job. I'm not going to worry about where I'm going to eat and where I'm going to sleep because my trust is in God. Well, let me just remind you. Go, go to Matthew. Matthew. Verse 33 says, it said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's when we seek God first. When you seek God first, you don't have to worry about all this other stuff. We're worried about the wrong stuff. We're focusing on the wrong stuff. And because we're focusing on the wrong stuff, we miss it. And our focus is not on the kingdom. And when our focus is not on building God's kingdom, you're going to work harder than you need to. You're going to waste some money you don't need to. You're going to waste some time that you're not going to need to waste. Because you're not focused. And what God is saying here in, in his word, he said, you are blessed. If you're hanging out with me, he said, you're blessed. You're blessed in the morning, blessed in the evening. No matter where you look at it, you're blessed. You can just say, I don't care how I slice this cake, it's going to still be good. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking about. No matter where I am in life, because I'm connected to God, I'm going to be okay. But look what it says. It says sinners and wicked people do not care about your agenda. So you got to stop trying to hang out with people that don't care about you. If people don't care about you, leave them alone. Stop wasting your time hanging out with people that ain't going nowhere. God's kingdom should be on all our agenda. The people that are selfish are the sinners. They're selfish. They're thinking about themselves only. And they're going to get destroyed. Verse 2. But his delight. I'm talking about you and I. Our delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law do we meditate day and night. Now this right here is for the born again Christian. You born again Christians, we allow God's word to shape our lives and assist us in developing our character and our conduct. Our character and our conduct. That's why when people treat you crazy on your job, you don't cuss them out. Y'all, I've had so many bosses in my Dow career. Some was good, some was mediocre, and some of them just going to bust hell wide open. I learned when I went to Michigan that these people, they think a little different. And some of those people didn't want me to succeed. They were trying to say, we're going to take, take this old Texas boy and take him on back to Texas. But God. I said, God, you're going to have to shape my mind. I don't want to go back to the old Roland and do people like they do me. Lord, I want to stay focused. I want to stay, keep my mind right because God... I don't even know. I might even start cussing if these people start acting crazy on me. And I don't want, what that look like? I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm at the church of God and Christ, the Holy Ghost church. And at that time, I was a deacon. What does it look like? A deacon cussing. Okay, don't look at no deacons, y'all. What 
what does it look like? And I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. And some of the same ones that wanted me to fail were some of the same ones that said, you know what? You different. And I said, what do you mean? You don't act like the folks in Saginaw. When Saginaw was predominantly African Americans and people were cutting and shooting and robbing and it was just a whole lot of crazy stuff. They said I didn't act like them. <laughs> I, I, I don't act like them. Oh, hallelujah. Well, when you've been born again, you have a different determination. You're different. And it's okay, y'all, if you are different. And if people don't understand you, it ain't your problem. It's their problem. You are trying to do the best you can do, trying to be the best disciple of Jesus Christ that you can be. Stop worrying about how people look at you and they're trying to sum you up. Don't try to be on everybody's team. I'm trying to be on the Lord's team, y'all. I ain't trying to be on everybody's team. Because some of these teams, they sinking. And I don't want to be sinking. I want to be with God because I already know what the end going to be. So being a living testimony of God's goodness is preferred rather than just being somebody. Just being someone just going to hang in the crowd because you want to be a friend to somebody. We all need a job. We all need a car. We all need a home. We all need the basic necessities of life. However, we need to be sure that we are following God's plan. When you follow your own plan, you're going to fail. We need to make sure we're following God so closely until we bump into him. Yeah, we need to be bumping into God every day. Righteous people enjoy studying God's word. Now, you know, I have to give y'all credit. Y'all come here almost every Sunday. When I look at, sometimes I know some people that get off at 6 o'clock in the morning. They don't work 12 hours. Get off at 6 o'clock in the morning, go home, take them a little nap, and they still beat some of y'all here. That hadn't worked all week. <laughs> It's something about when you're hungry for God and you want more of God, you do whatever it takes. You don't come up with a bunch of excuses. I can't do this and I can't do that. I don't have time. I'm just tired. Well, I'm tired too. But I love God so much until I give up some of my stuff just to be in his presence. Look at verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Say his season. His leaf, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Y'all, that's what we should be as born-again Christians. Their fruit will appear at the proper time. Our fruit. Not necessarily so it says it's going to show immediately, but in the proper time, in God's time, and our fruit shows up. Spiritual health. Hallelujah. Spiritual health help represent the leaves that's on your tree. Some of y'all trees or green and y'all budding. Some of y'all don't have no leaves on your tree. Leaves them fell off. Because you're not walking the way God wants you to walk. Usually the fruit God says he would produce in our lives, he talks about in the Old Testament, is physical prosperity. But the fruit of the Christian bears is mainly transformed character and godly conduct. Look at what it says here in Galatians. You already know it. We had vacation Bible school. The fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, beginning with verse 22. It said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Y'all, think about this. Gentleness, 
self-control, against such there is no law. Your fruit show up no matter where you at. <laughs> no matter what you're going through, your fruit show up. You don't just love because somebody is loving you. You love because that's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be an example of love. Long-suffering, being patient with people. You know how quick some of us are? We cut people off so quick. We don't let people even finish their sentence because we don't jump in so quick. Some of y'all, y'all cut people off at the path. God blessings on one's words and works. God's going to bless you. His prosperity is from God's viewpoint, not necessarily from the world's viewpoint. When God say you prosper, he say you're going to prosper. It ain't based upon how a man think. Man think if you got a long car and you, you got a big house and you got a lot of money that you prosper. But can you prosper spiritually? Can you prosper that you just happy, happy? And people just can't figure you out. Don't have no job, but you got money in the bank. You got a roof over your head. You got food. You got transportation. And everybody wondering, what make you tick? Why are you doing all this stuff? All this stuff. You're going on vacation, and I already got no vacation money. How you do it? Because God says, I'm going to allow you to prosper because I want you to prosper because you are righteous. You're not wicked. You're doing what's right according to God's word. And if you look at this verse, it talks about the tree is planted by the rivers of water. Y'all know we just had hurricane barrel to come through here. A lot of trees laying over. But I saw some old trees still standing. They're still standing. You know why they're still standing? Because their root system is so deep. The root system, and that's why we as Christians, our root system got to get deep in God. We got to make sure that we are sure that we know who we are. We got to make sure we stay on God's word, stay in God's word, study God's word, meditate on God's word. Don't let nothing take you away from God's word. You got to stay in the God's word. And what makes these old folks root get so deep? They never left God. Roots are thick in God's word. People can't see your root. They only see you. But if they only knew in the midnight hour when you're praying and you're fasting and making your root get a little deeper, hallelujah, everybody else is sleeping, everybody else is doing whatever they want, but you are fasting, you're studying God's word, and you're praying, and God, you're seeking God's face like never before, and people be wondering, what make you tick? You just lost your job, and you're just happy as you can be. The doctor gave you a bad report, but you still come to church. Hallelujah. And you wave your hand just like you don't care. Oh, glory to God. Somebody know that he's a way maker. Somebody know he's a promise keeper. Somebody know that he'll heal your body. Somebody know. And you only know that when your roots are deep. Hallelujah. I pray that the young people get some deep roots. Because the hurricane of life is coming your way. The hurricane of life is going to come and when it blows, will you fall over? Oh, glory to God. I've seen some old people go through a lot of stuff, but their roots are so deep. P. 
people be caring who's going to be the president. My daddy told me one time, he said, when Reagan was uh, a president, everybody talked about him. He said, I made more money under Reagan than anybody else. Daddy told me, he said, I don't care who's president. I care who's God. He said, my God is the one I'm going to put my trust in. So don't worry about all this other stuff that's going on in the world. Put your trust in God. And you can look and say, I ain't worried about this. I ain't going to worry about that. I'm going to put my trust in God. My root system is deep. That means when the wind blow, it ain't gonna just blow on over. Now you can have deep roots, but are your roots healthy? Hallelujah. I've seen some people with some deep roots, but they're as crooked as they can be. But when your roots are deep and they're healthy in the Lord, you're gonna be all right. Look at verse four. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Look at what the words say about these wicked people. They don't have a covenant relationship with the Lord. They have little regard to God, and they have little regard to God's people. They don't care what goes on with God, they don't care what's going on with you. They, it's all about them. They ain't necessarily evil people. They just don't know no better. Hallelujah. But look at the shaft. It, it's, it's the unworthy husk that's on a plant. Hallelujah. It's part of the grain, but it's the part that's no good. It's lightweight, and when the wind blows, it blows away. It's not something that you admire. It's not even something that's beneficial. But it's just there. And that's just how some people are in our life. They just there. Verse 5 says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Look at what it says. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Not your judgment. Talk about God's judgment. So don't you, don't you try to handle it. Let God handle it. He said, no sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So in the future, there will be a judgment that going to happen. That's going to be a great judgment. And I will tell you, uh, you don't have to worry about trying to separate stuff. Go to Matthew 13, 30. Matthew 13, 30. Look at what it says here. It's talking about the parable of the wheat and the tares. Our problem as Christians... We're so busy trying to segregate people, put people in boxes. And God says here, but let both the wheat and the tare, that the, the wheat is the good stuff, the tare is the stuff that's going to be thrown away. He said, let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the weepers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn y'all will wheat God's going to gather us together and bring us before him but the tear he said he will have the reapers to bind them up and burn them they're going to hell that's not where you and I are going. I mean, you gotta, we got a different journey. We got a whole different path. That's why we as Christians should stop trying to separate people. God knows. 
God knows who's on this program. God knows who's not. God knows the righteous from the unrighteous. He said, let them all come together, and I'm going to do the separating. Y'all, we better stop trying to separate people. Verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Look at what it says. God knows. He has intimate love concern about all of us. What Christians are going through here on earth, God knows. God knows what you're going through. God knows the unjust that's happening in your life, whether it's on your job, in your community, in your God knows. You don't have to put it on Facebook. God knows. It. Hallelujah. God knows the righteous from the unrighteous. God knows. God knows your heart. God knows your heart is a heart of righteousness. You want to do what's right. God knows it. The way refers to the whole course of life. It said, for the Lord knoweth the way of the right. He said he know your whole life. He know everything about you, including what motivates you, what it produces, and what, where it ends. God knows. Are you motivated for a position? Are you motivated for, for just to get some money? What motivates you? Is your motivation really consisting of having a relationship with the Lord or trying to prove something to man? Those wicked people may not be taken care of the way that you think they should be. That's why I'm saying God got this. Stop trying to pay people back on what they done done to you. Hallelujah. Just sit back and watch the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just sit back. That's all you got to do. Keep believing, keep trusting in God, keep your faith checked so that God can have the true righteousness that he needs to have in your life. And stop worrying about all this other stuff that's going on. There's going to always be something going on. And that don't mean that you have to participate in everything that's going on. Hallelujah. I told y'all a time when some people that doubt, they're saying, we're going to just quit. Everybody getting from home, let's just, let's, let's just quit. I said, who are you talking about? He said, all of we just need to quit. I said, well, I got some bills to pay. I ain't going to just quit. Now, there's some of y'all out there, y'all young folks, y'all don't have another job, but y'all just quit. Something wrong with you. Before I leave a job, you better believe I got another one laid up somewhere. You young people, stop quitting job because you got mad at somebody. The next job, you will get mad at somebody else. Stop quitting these jobs. We sit up here and pray for you, lay hands on you, put all on you, saying, Lord, have favor with them, have favor not only with God, but have favor with man, so when you interview, you're going to be all right, and you're going to quit the job. Don't come up here and let me pray for you no more. I done prayed and done prayed. And this thing about me, once I pray for you, it's in my spirit. And now you on my prayer list. I start praying for you Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Come again Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Don't come here playing with me. God wants all of us to have a righteous life. So that we prosper. Not prosper just the way you want to prosper, but prosper, prosper the way God wants us to prosper. I praise God for these older folks. Y'all, they sit around and they walk here all saintly, looking all good, smelling all good. And you know they ain't worried about nothing. They ain't worried about. They got God on the right, God on the left, God in the front, God in behind, 
God on a God on the Bible. It, they have learned to put their trust in God. Y'all, us young folks that's 30 and younger. <laughs> Hallelujah. Us young folks. Y'all, we better listen to some of these old folks. Listen to some of these old folks. They got something they can tell you. Just walk. Look at their walk. Look how they don't even get concerned about this stuff that shake all us up. They don't even get concerned about it. Because they'll learn to trust in the Lord. There might be someone today. that we need to pray for, hallelujah. Altar workers are coming. If you need us to pray for you today, we'll pray. Believing God will have his way in your life. Y'all, that's, that's who we are as Christians. We believe. We trust God. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We believe in God today. We trust in him like never before. Lord, thank you that we ain't worried about the people that do us wrong. And we don't worry about the cares of this world. But Lord, we're going to trust in you. The almighty the one that made heaven and earth. And if he can make heaven and earth, send his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And then call Jesus back up to heaven. He's somebody that you need to know. So if you're not saved today, I want you to come down here and I want you to get saved. And or if you just need us to pray for you today, why don't you come believing and trusting God today? Till I die.
the Lord until I die, until I die.
Trustee, you're coming at this time. 
We just thank God for being God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. So good. What will we do without him? Everybody standing. And we're going to pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you today and praise your name. And God, as we prepare now to worship in our giving, we first want to just tell you thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us jobs and giving us retirement income, Lord, that we can give to continue to build your kingdom. God, we don't take it for granted. We thank you that you trust us with 100%. And God, we thank you that you're putting our spirit that we must give to your kingdom. And God, we don't give grudgingly, but we give with joy. We're thankful that we can give and be a blessing to your kingdom, Lord. And blessing to this community, Lord. So God, we just praise your name for what you're doing. So have your way in our lives today. Now, Lord, bless these people some 30, 60, 100 fold. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. If you follow the direction of the urchins, amen. Thank you today. We're going to have a couple of announcements. Don't forget about Monday prayer. Thank you for always calling in on that Monday morning. Uh, we just praise your name. We thank you <clears throat> for all you do. Great amount of saying. Uh, also, uh, this coming Friday is our adult game night. Amen. So adult game night uh, this coming Friday. We want to thank the special events committee, and we're going to meet right after morning worship to finish talking about uh, this event, which is Friday. So if you're an adult, <clears throat> make sure you sign up. I think they're going to be in the foyer. Uh, so if, you wanna, if you're going to come, <clears throat> sign up so we'll know how much food to prepare and how many activities we need to uh, have for Friday night. So it starts at 6 and it ends at 11. I think some of y'all can hang out to about 11 probably. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But anyway, it's going to be a fun time when the body of Christ, we just come together. Uh, you can invite a guest. So invite a guest. If you have family member and friends that you think would enjoy this, uh, we're just having a great fellowship in the name of the Lord. Amen. And then uh, we have our back to school, back to college event that's going to take place. And this is not just Greater Mount Zion, but there's other organizations uh, that's going to be a part of it. Jerusalem Baptist is going to be a part of it. Uh, Sam Feathers Youth Foundation. Uh, the AKA is going to be a part of it. Um, Swinney Lions Club is helping us out. So uh, there's a couple of things that we're going to do. And so we're glad uh, that we're going to be a part of this. So uh, we're giving away backpacks and we're giving away um, school supplies. So come, it's gonna be a great time for all the family. So we start at four o'clock and it ends about eight o'clock. So most of the stuff, well, everything is gonna be free. So, uh, so you guys come and be a part of it. There was a water slide for the young folks and that's young folks. I don't know where age even start at, but it's for the young folks, amen, amen. So don't, 